Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal, says that despite government intervention, cryptocurrencies are not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, welcome back to the show, Gerald. Happy New Year. Uh, Felice Anno Nuovo. Thank you. <laughs> to you as well. Well, last time you came on the show, you mentioned that cryptos will be the currency of the future and that people have lost faith in fiat currencies. So what does a paradigm shift in cryptos mean for investors here, Gerald? Well, uh, go to China. No one's using cash anymore. Uh, they're just using their apps. So, and the same thing that's happening in Asia, and you're looking at the crypto uh, markets, most of it's being driven by Asia. The point being, Danielle, is that the world is going cashless. They don't have faith in their currencies either. And we're seeing, it's a whole new paradigm shift. It's as different from when horse and buggies and there was the Iceman in the 19th century to how it changed in the 20th century. And that's what is changing into the 21st century. The world is going digital. And these digital currencies, we believe, are going to have some stock because people have lost faith in, in the fiat currencies. You know, they make fun of the cryptocurrencies. Well, you know, they're not backed by anything. Well, how big is the debt now? About $220 trillion worldwide from all of this phony money they've been printing. But so it's a populist generation's gold. You know, you are one of the rare few that I've interviewed, Gerald, that likes both the cryptos and gold. So you can coexist within these two environments. Absolutely. And they both have a place. For example, when we see the next financial crisis coming, and everyone knows it's going to come, it's just a matter of time, you're going to see people going into safe haven assets. And they're going to go into gold, and they're going to go into cryptocurrencies. You already see it when there's, when there's trouble in different countries. You, people, all of a sudden, they go into crypto and they go into gold. And again, it's the new millennial generation's form of gold. And it's easy to do. It's it, and by the way, governments are going to crack down on it. There's no question right. about it. How hard they crack down on it, that becomes an issue. Well, we've already Just, seen crackdowns already, uh, Gerald. You've seen them coming out of South Korea, and now look what's going on in China. They're stopping uh, crypto uh, Bitcoin mining, and about two thirds of all of the Bitcoin mining is coming out of China. So. It doesn't have the solidity, the, the solid element, the physical element of gold. And that's why gold still remains the ultimate safe haven asset. But we also see this one, too. In a time of crisis, bam, people are going to go onto their computers and they're going to go crypto. Well, how much longer do you think this rally in equities can last? Again, it, it depends on how fast they raise interest rates. And you're looking all over the world. The ECB just came out and they said they're going to slow down their quantitative easing. What quantitative easing? Giving money to your buddies, man. Look at that big firm, that South African firm that the ECB was buying bonds with. You know, they're not buying only government bonds. So now they're cutting back on the stimulus. The only thing that's kept the markets going is cheap money. Here, in the States, what happened? Look at the new mortgage applications that just came out. They're way down. As soon as interest rates go up, this thing starts going down. So it depends on how fast they raise interest rates. And again, we're looking at the weakness of the dollar now because they're talking about the euro going up because they're closing down the quantitative easing faster than they once anticipated. But again, these are only temporary. Okay, so let's tie this into gold now. Um, obviously, heavily related to interest rates rising and falling here. It's had a good run here since the start of the year. Uh, do you see this trend continuing? Again, it depends on the dollar. If interest rates go up too strong, you're going to see the dollar go up and gold get weak. So it depends on the strength of the dollar and how much they raise interest rates. Again, I, I, new mortgage applications. You keep looking at all the data coming out, and as interest rates go up, housing goes down, the economy goes down, but then there's a Trump's tax cut. But what, and that's going right. to fuel a lot of dough into corporations. Well, do you have any, any feeling as to how this is going to play out? 
I don't know. You know, it depends on how fast they raise interest rates. So if interest rates become too strong, but even if they raise interest rates three times in 2018, what is that? It's not even a full percentage points. It's what, 75 basis points. So we still see gold solid because it hasn't broken below that 1250 mark that everybody was looking at. Well, let's look and at it from this perspective then, Gerald, okay? The, the environment in which gold is living in. We have rising interest rate environment. We have a strong equity market. Yet gold's still managing to hold above 1300 here. Um, so is this not a bullish case for gold? It's a strong case for gold. We see gold becoming bullish when it breaks over 1400 and in the mid 1400s, which it hasn't done in years. And this is what we've been saying for years. So it's still in that trading range. We don't see a big downside risk of gold. That's the whole thing. You know, what's your downside risk? A hundred, hundred and fifty dollars? That's nothing. So again, we see gold not breaking out until it goes over fourteen fifty, solidifies over that, and then it takes a Bitcoin bounce. Bitcoin we bounce. We mean going to like two thousand and above. Gerald, thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow.